Okay, we got a model now. We've got some zones, we got some materials. We're ready to do the analysis. So in the big final 20, let me let her rip and kind of show you how some of this stuff works. Okay, so if you're ready, buckle yourselves in because it's going to be a little bit of a bumpy ride, but we'll make it work. Okay, so here's how it's happening. In terms of sh sun and shadow, let's start with that. Let me turn on the uh, uh, Visualize tab. That may be the easiest way to do it. And in the Visualize tab, I'm going to turn on the, if I go down the Properties palette, switch to the Sun tool. And the easiest thing to think about in terms of the sun and what's going on is, we can say, show the shadows. And you can start to see the shadows in the building, both cast by the roof and what's happening in terms of light coming in through the windows. And we can change these around. Now, these are accurate to the latitude and the longitude as well as the orientation. So if they're looking really funny, check your orientation and your latitude and longitude. But then as I go switching around between June or December, you start seeing we have the very long shadows, the very short shadows. Now, this is in Tokyo now, so we're back in the northern hemisphere. So we have that issue where June has the high in the sky sun, uh, small shadows. Oh, December has the long shadows because the sun's very low in the sky. Now, as we're looking at this, if you'd actually like to sort of see the sun in the sky, you can turn on either the daily sun path or the annual sun path. And this is like a little solar heliodon. Let me just do daily first. In terms of the daily sun path, and here we are hanging around. Let me reorient that a little bit. You can sort of see that here is the sun in the sky, and if we want to adjust the sun in the sky, I can either do it by kind of using the little uh, arrow toggle at the top of the screen, or I can actually come down here and just push and pull the sun in the sky. So I can say there's 8 in the morning, there's 13 o'clock, there's 1500. You can sort of choose whatever you want. And again, we can do that. This is just on a single day. That's December 1st. If I switch that over to May or June, you'll see that the sun path looks different and the shadows respond accordingly. So it's pretty easy to see where the sun will be at different times of the day, okay? And as part of your assignment, that'll be a real easy one to get at. You can go through and just find where the sun is in the sky very nicely and start to see where the shaded surfaces are and where they're not. How do you output these visualizations? visualizations? What you can do is either do a screenshot or see this little guy over here and it says copy view to the clipboard. You can either copy as a bitmap or save it to a file. So this thing that looks like a little camera down in the background. So go ahead, you can put those out as a JPEG or you can put them out as a PNG, whatever it is. Let me say, uh, I'll put that there. This is Solar May picture. Also, I'll save that away. What I tend to do is I often push this thing off the screen because there's definitely a little glitch where every once in a while that thing ends up in the picture. So what I usually do is push it off the screen and then hit the Enter key, okay, just so it's not in the picture. Okay, but that'll get you out there. So go ahead and get your, uh, I think you were asking for the June and you're asking for the December. Okay, but choose the right date. I'm still on the first here. Okay, at whatever time. Actually, this is 8.15 in the morning. If it has to be 12 o'clock, go ahead and do that. On December 21st, let's put it at the uh, solstice as opposed to the equinox. Okay, and we can go ahead and get those visualizations. I'm rolling between different dates right now. Now, just so you know, you get the still images. You can also do this thing where you animate it. You can create a little visualization. and see the sun, either in terms of what's happening hourly through the day. Or if you want to, you can say, let's show it annually through the year. Okay, so that's the essence of sun and shadow analysis, is really just starting to get that basic information, boom, and understanding what's happening with the shadows. We can also do something in terms of bouncing light rays off the shelf, but I'm going to actually defer that one right now. In fact, let me even offer for you, Simon and Breton, if there's uh, interest in sort of doing a little follow-up session like we can to kind of like follow up on some specific things, that, you know, topics, because, you know, it's, I think there's, you know, we won't get through everything we want to today. But let me get the highlights out for everyone, and then people who are really keen, we can set up something else for them, or I can kind of give you a video that just kind of explains some of those things. But that's the essence of sun and shadow. So let's go ahead and start with that one. 
Okay, solar radiation, let's talk about that, because that's the next one you're after in terms of trying to understand the values. How do you output these visualizations? Oh, okay, the voice is buckled. Oh, project, do we assign ones? How do we assign the Rhino imported model? Okay, okay, sure. Good. I think there's another message coming through. Nope, that's a previous question. Okay, <laughs> not to worry. That's good. Okay, in terms of, oh, the solar radiation, let's kind of show you the quickie way to do that. You got all the sun, and you can sort of see what's happening with the sun in the sky. You might be wondering what's actually happening in terms of the radiation building up on the house throughout the day. And there's a great tool within here to help you understand that too. And here's how it basically works. There's all of these different surfaces to the house, and as you go through moving, you know, through the day or through time, you see all the sun kind of moving around. There's different surfaces that are getting a lot of incident radiation, some are getting less, and here's how you can kind of quickly get at that. There's actually a tool built into Ecotech that's all designed to help us get that, and let me show you where it lives. It's under the Calculate menu, and it's called the Solar Access Analysis. Let me kind of give you the real quickie on it. When you bring it up, it brings up a little wizard that you can go through and tell it what you're interested in seeing, whether it's the incident solar radiation, so that's just actually sort of what's hitting the surface, versus the absorbed radiation. That'll be more based on kind of the thermal properties of the wall, how much it's actually absorbing, but let's go for incident. That's probably the easiest. That's just actually what's hitting the surface. We can do it for a specific period or for the current time and day. Let me just do it for the current date and time, the whole day. We'll do the whole day and kind of do it that way throughout the day. We get to say, do we want to do the cumulative insulation throughout the entire day, the average, the peak? You get to kind of choose which one you're after. So in terms of what we're asking them for, yeah, Simon, like, uh, do you have a preference? The peak. Great. So let's go ahead and choose the peak value. Okay, that'll be the absolute highest value throughout the day. We'll say next to that. Next we say, where do we want to do this? And we're actually going to put the coloration right on the objects in the model. That way you'll have a big map, a big color map showing right on the model, showing us what the values are. Okay, we're going to say use the existing shadow tables. We've already sort of calculated the shadows for this model, so I'll say just use those. As opposed to recalculating, say okay. And what's going to happen is, I'm not sure you can see down here in the bottom, it's doing a little calculation right now. And when it gets up to 100, it's going to put a color map across the entire uh, building that's going to show us basically the number of watts per uh, square meter. As it's doing its thing ever so slowly as time ticks away. So hang on. Right, we'll get through this. This is sort of why I wanted to use the simpler model. When you go off and do this, if your uh, model has you know thousands of surfaces that are all kind of curved and you know this could take like half an hour or something like that. So think carefully about like uh, you know that that may be a reason for simplifying the model. Okay, I see voice of Simon's typing. Ah, let's kind of take a look at that. What it's going to do is it's going to put up a scale for us, and then we also can go through and export the data like it's a CSV file. CSV, yeah. So we can actually sort of see it that one. What's hot in its terms? Well, it's everything's relative is kind of what it is. But basically, in its, what it's going to do, it's going to give us a scale that's scaled from uh, blue to yellow. Okay, let's see. Oh, come on, finish up. It's just taking so long. Uh, hope it's worthwhile. Yeah, keep going with the questions because we can uh, fill time with uh, answering a few of those. Oh, 
Okay, that's good. So you think we still still have the next seven minutes? Um, in some ways it is just because you can associate the thermal data like kind of right out of there. It's I'd say you say sometime. Yeah, really, it could go either way. You know, so not a huge data difference, but if you're already there, you know, you, you get to kind of pull a little more information across. Okay, so here's what's going on in terms of the, the color mapping. Again, this is some image that I think you want to go through and store down in here. Here's the uh, scale. Hold on a sec. Okay, go on. No worries. Okay, so here's the kind of uh, color scale in terms of what's going on, showing the peak value. So you see it's over 800 on this surface. It's about 400 on this surface. We got some relatively hot walls there and some very cool walls on that side. Again, for this day, the peak values is what that's all about. And then in terms of looking at these things, if you want to actually get at some of uh, these values, let me see where I could find it again. I think it's under display. We can sort of say that we want to say the peak, the peak direct, the peak diffuse, choose whether or not we want to display the colors. But if you actually want to sort of play around with the scaling, you can do that. Or even under here, this is where we can actually um, export the data. So it was really attribute management. Let me show that again, just if you want to get this out and kind of really get to the detailed data here. Again, it's under display and attribute values. It's under properties. And that's where we can actually export the values and take it out as a text file that we can then go ahead and like uh, bring into Excel and sort of start to see what that looks like. Okay. So that'll get you going on the solar radiation. And again, that'll change depending on what time of, uh, day it is. You know, right now it's for the full day, but the peak values. Let me give you the last two real quickly before you have to run out the door. One is the whole notion of doing the uh, daylighting analysis. And let me show you what that looks like. Let me, for this model, I'm going to like basically turn off that coloration since it's kind of uh, looking very big right now. Okay. And we're going to go through and take a look at, for example, oh, the daylighting on, and you can do this in any individual room, but let me show you how it works. I'll come in, for example, the kitchen area right now. That's the kitchen area, and what I've done is selected the floor. So here's how the whole issue of the daylighting works. For the daylighting, the idea is we could choose a room or series of rooms and put down a grid that then lets us go through and kind of look at the values in that room. So how that works is we've chosen that floor. I can say daylighting grid or the analysis grid, and then I can basically then say let's put a grid in there Okay, in the XY axis, 600 millimeters is kind of a standard height for analyzing daylighting. Okay, close to two feet is the way I think of that. There's the grid. That grid is basically going to now report some values for the daylighting. And what I do now is, again, run through some sort of little wizard. I'm going to say only the daylighting. Okay, over the analysis grid. I can choose the number of points. I'm skipping through this really quickly just so you sort of get a sense. There's the issue of how like uh, clean the windows are because there's always some loss due to the dirtiness in the windows. And then finally, I'll say OK. OK. It'll go through and do a daylighting analysis. What it's doing is just doing, a, for each of those different cells in the grid, it's measuring the amount of daylighting that's coming through the different windows. Okay, and again, there's this issue of hotness. The, the brighter the color, the more daylighting is coming there. You'll see that the high range, it looks like the value is somewhere around 20% of the full daylight is coming through there, which is actually pretty warm. I mean, pretty hot in terms of a daylighting sense. Okay, darker back in the corner. Okay, but we can sort of see it's very bright at the window. It's very darker back in that corner. This is actually initially showing it to you in terms of daylighting factors. 
If I want to, I can actually say, let me show the node values and even show the peaks only. And I can even say, show contours to really kind of start to understand, you know, in more detail, like uh, how the daylighting is kind of percolating back in the room. Daylighting factor is a percentage of the total sunlight on the outside. If you prefer to look at it in terms of lux, you can switch it over to daylighting levels, and that'll actually switch it back to either we do foot candles or lux. I forget what the unit is here. It looks like it's lux here. And again, there's a scale. So once again, we have these images. We can go ahead and like show these images. And really for all the different rooms, in fact, you can do the whole house, kind of see where the daylighting is strongest, where the darker areas, and figure out where you might want to go through and add skylights or more windows to increase the daylighting. So that's kind of the gist of daylighting just to get you going. And the last one in my last minute here is the notion of thermal. Let me kind of show you that because that's a real quickie is once you've gone through and put together the uh, heating and cooling, or the, the thermal characteristics of the walls and windows, you can go to the analysis tab and actually say, oh, let me see, for example, a real good one to look at, oh, I like to look at passive gains breakdown. That's one of my favorite ones. Let me show you what it looks like. It's gonna do through a little calculation here. What this one does is, let me turn off the data grid since we're not looking at that one. What the passive analysis breakdown does is it takes a look at the thermal properties of the house and says, okay, really, where are we losing heat? How much heat are we losing through each of the different surfaces? How much heat are we gaining through each of the surfaces? And then, like, uh, you know, then we can think about how to go through and improve that. Let's go ahead and bring this up. Oh, I should have had a ready made one. Come on. This will finish up in just a second. Okay, hopefully you haven't quite been chased out of the room yet, because I can probably finish this in two minutes. Do a little stalling by the door, just to be certain. Okay, excellent. <laughs> I guess that's the criteria. Sounds good. We'll keep it going for just a few minutes here and answer some questions for people. Okay, so basically what it's doing is based on the thermal properties that we put in there, it's going through and doing the analysis uh, of really where we're gaining and losing heat. Let me show you what that looks like so you can sort of see what that looks like. Because there's two things I'm going to show you. One is how you sort of understand kind of this overall notion of how much heat is being gained or lost. And then we'll show you what that actually translates into sort of energy consumption. It only has to go through and do this calculation once because what it's doing is figuring out, given the thermal properties and these interspatial dependencies, yeah. Is the terminal analysis set for the day? Actually, in this case, it's doing it across the entire year. It's over the entire year. Okay, so here's what's going on. Let's look at this. This is gains and losses. What's happening above the line are the gains, below the line are losses. So this house right now in this climate, I don't think I even put a climate in here right now, is really showing, you'll see that I am losing a lot of heat January through May. Okay, not so much in the summer. In fact, I'm gaining some heat during the summer, the red heat. That's conv conductions coming through the walls and the windows. Then I'm losing it again in December. This is more for a northern climate, kind of like here in uh, Northern California or in the States. You'd have the opposite behavior. Okay, we have the hemisphere switched, switched. See, we're getting a lot through conduction here. The little green, that's natural ventilation. That's just because we have a certain amount of air change going on all the time. We're going to lose some heat just because the air has to kind of keep on changing to ventilate the space. In terms of the gains, you'll see there's this sort of uh, olive green color. That's solar air radiation. What's happening there is we have a certain amount of heat that's actually hitting the surfaces and then re-radiating in through those surfaces. So the roof and the walls actually re-radiate through. Direct solar, that's the yellow. Notice I actually don't have very much direct solar right now because my sun's mostly on the back side of the house where there very, weren't very many windows. But if I were looking at this profile, I could say if I wanted to be gaining more heat from the sun, I either need to put more windows in because I'm not gaining very much or reorient the house to gain that. 
If I'm looking at the thermal characteristics, I might say that, hey, from a conduction standpoint, I'm losing a lot of heat through the walls. So if I was going to improve anything, doing something to improve the thermal characteristics of the walls might be good. So Simon, yeah, yeah go ahead and let's ask some questions and we'll uh, keep it going. So if the building was turned around, would have, yes, it would have a very, it would flip in terms of, in fact, let's see if we can even do that in terms of the project. Let's flip it. And we'll go back to analysis and try rewriting it. Yeah, it looks like it's not actually doing it there. So let me think about why it is it, but no, it should have that effect in terms of what's going on. Because well, actually what should happen is I would expect there'd be a lot more solar radiation. In fact, I think there is more there. It's just this this graph rescales itself. So how do we understand the intensity of the information? What is the scale? The scale actually keeps on changing, at least in terms of what's going on there. However, what happens is down here, these are absolute values that are shown down here in terms of, well, no, I take that back. It's still the percentage. The true watts per hours per meters, watt hours per meter square is shown over here, but we almost have to sort of export the data to really kind of understand you know, what's going on there. But the scale over here, this is absolute. Well, it, the, the diagram keeps on rescaling. The, the the values are reported as absolute. This side over here is just sort of a percentage. So that I'll be the first to admit that's a little bit confusing in terms of what's going on. You know, let me see if I can come up with something else that's a little bit better in terms of showing you that. Oh, hourly heat gains and losses. Let's see what that looks like. Again, this is sort of just watts per hour, just kind of through the day. Although this is on that one specific day. This is one where you know, it's supposed to cross the whole year. This is showing us what's going on on a day-by-day -day thing. Oh, what else do we have in here? We have this whole thing in here about like uh, the uh, fabric gains. Let's go to that. That's just actually looking through like how many watts we're actually gaining through the fabric of the building on a specific day. So this is on the uh, the envelope, kind of uh, showing us again like positive watts versus losing watts. Okay, and you'll see that what's going on over here in June and July, at least here, we're gaining in the middle, we're losing in the night time and in the morning, in the summer and the winter. So. There's just you know this is almost like the Swiss Army knife of so many different things, and we need to dig in here just a little bit. But again, I would say since we're going to run out of time now, if we want to, we can schedule something else to kind of dig into this in a little more detail. Another type of result that I think might be kind of a really cool one to show you is this. This is all just sort of basically thermal data popping through. There is this whole notion of uh, solar exposure. Let me show you resource consumption because I think that's actually pretty good. Let me calculate. the resource consumption. I can either show that to you as cumulative or daily. This will show us what the actual heating and cooling loads are day by day. Okay, so you'll see I got a lot of heating load, then cooling load during the, our summer months, then heating load coming up here again. This again, is it's, it's annoying to me. It's a scale that doesn't change. Oh, actually, and I take that back. Configure the graph scale. Lock the scale. Okay, and this is this funny thing in terms of, I think this is what we have to do. I always sort of forget about that, but I think that'll help us actually maintain a common scale. Let's see if that's available over on the passive gains, because I think it's available over there too. If I go back to passive gains, yep, looks like it's over here too. So again, I get the choice of locking the scale, Okay, which that means it would at least stay the same, so we wouldn't have the jumping around between different things. I don't often do that, but I remember someone showing me that, and that actually is pretty good. For resources, what I wanted to show you here is, okay, here's uh, heating and cooling okay, versus cumulative. You can sort of see how much we're spending across the entire year. And what I love about this, for example, here we have heating and cooling. Okay, and you're seeing here's the cooling, here's the heating. That's kind of okay. I got this lock scale right now. Let's lock that scale in there. Okay, it's this funny issue. If, for example, if we go through and take a look at the zones, 
Even doing things like saying that the temperature set points, for example, if we would live, and this will sound really cold to you, if instead of uh, turning on the heat when it got down to 18, we actually let it got down to 16, which is an awful big change, and we recalculate. Okay, it'll lower the heat load a, a significant amount in terms of what's going on. So we can start playing with any of those things. So let me just kind of pause and just say, hey, let's take questions from you guys in terms of what's most relevant because there's just, you know, again, it's a Swiss Army knife. We can go a bazillion different ways. So anything anyone wants to ask, we'll try and stick around as long as you want to. And the phone's available, too. I still have that open, so if you want to do it that way, uh, I think Brenton still has his phone open on that side. Great. Nothing? Have we just overwhelmed you with all this stuff? Oh, the drop. Let's put the... Hey. Hey, very good. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So one's passive gains. That's one of my favorite charts. I think that one tells me the most because that's the one where I can really see quickly just where I'm losing and where I'm gaining heat. And that gives me some guidance about then how to maybe think about, you know, the interventions that would make the most sense. So thermal analysis is one of the tabs and resource consumption is the other one. That, those are my two favorites. <laughs> oh, my pleasure. Oh, oh, it's about eleven forty here in the evening. But uh, yeah, my pleasure. I have a. I get a kick doing this and yeah, please let's follow up because I think there's there's so much more if you want to put together another session I'm more than happy to do that for you whatever makes the most sense hey very good <laughs> thank you very much appreciated okay go knock them out with your assignments oh no worries okay you guys take care have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.